and the harassment. Hello, fellow Araxians. This is your entertainment during the server downtime. For you that are actively playing or on the notification squad, you are probably watching this during the 12 hour server improvements slash database migration downtime that's going on the day I release this video. If you didn't know that's happening, now you do. This was supposed to happen a couple weeks back, but there were some server problems and they postponed it. So now we're doing it. So we always knew the database maintenance and migration was the key part. Something that seemed to get added on was some server hardware upgrades. countering has been in desperate shape, but I've been hearing a few mumblings from Miller and Cobalt as well. So hopefully this maintenance can tackle those issues. They have a speculative fix for the footstep bug, where sometimes on some people's setups, footsteps will endlessly play no matter what you're doing. And I guess VS was bugged on Indar and they couldn't trigger the meltdown alerts. So it's good they're fixing it. That won't solve the issue of Indar lasting forever, unfortunately. They need to put less weight on touching a warp gate and more weight on winning the mini alerts and the existing continent control. But that is a discussion for a different video. Today what I want to talk about is Rogue Planet games and their path to becoming an indie developer. Now, like most companies, it has its roots as an indie developer. Before Daybreak Games, before Sony Online Entertainment, they were a scrappy little company called Varen Interactive, but that company released Tonrus and EverQuest. They were pioneers of the industry when they were tiny. With success comes growth. EverQuest was a smash hit. The company got bigger. Star Wars Galaxies and Planetside were both popular titles. The company got bigger. DC Universe Online, EverQuest 2, Planetside 2, and then H1Z1. Sony Online Entertainment grew to be in the 500 to 1,000 employee range. But over time, some of their titles came to a close, such as Free Realms. And in other cases, titles never came to fruition and had to be shut down. EverQuest Next and Landmark H1Z1 Just Survive, and Planet Sat Arena. Growth is tough. You're expanding personnel. You're expanding into different countries. That means more HR resources. That means more legal resources. That means more facilities maintenance resources. And along with all that, expansion means more management. What can happen then when a company starts to contract is it can be very top heavy. You've brought in all these resources to help control and manage the growth. But when the growth isn't there, they just don't really serve a purpose. So you have to go through this phase of paring down the company. And it's difficult because when you grow into a corporate structure, things change. You aren't agile like a little indie developer. You can't afford to be casual about things or make mistakes here. You have to be slower and more by the book when you're a big giant corporation. But that also means you're generally less competitive. You depend on doing so much business rather than doing little bits better and faster. So the job for Rogue Planet Games now is to find its way back to the heart and soul of an indie developer, where you're really in touch with the community, where your development is really driven by passion and excitement of what you're doing and trying to deliver something amazing rather than you have to be this productive by these four delivery dates so you get a good annual review. And when a company gets big enough that they have to shift to that second approach, it can be tough to shake it off. Management's need to sort of break every task down into small little manageable chunks 
so that HR can easily minus one roll over here, plus one roll over here, merge two rolls over here. Works very well to try and keep everything fair and equitable and take employees with ranges of strength and weaknesses, be able to cram that bundle into whatever hole they need plugged. The problem is that tends to stifle creativity, passion, and innovation. And if you're developing a game like Madden 2020, I mean, who cares, right? There's really no room for any of that. It's not helpful. But when you're dabbling in these more niche spaces, like a superhero role-playing game, like a sandbox RPG MMO, or an MMO FPS, you're just not gonna be able to attract anyone with something that's generic and boring. This sort of title depends so much on creative innovation. If you get too big, that can be stifled. So right now I'm closely watching their path back to being an indie developer. One of the nice things to see them doing is just stating it how it is. He very clearly stated on Reddit what we already knew that when H1Z1 was really taking off, resources were moved around in the company, and they supported H1Z1 at the expense of PlanetSide 2. In the past, it's always been a very, put a smile on, oh no, no, that's not what's happening, that's not why we can't get anything done in PlanetSide 2. He goes on to say that this splitting of Daybreak Games into separate development studios will avoid that happening in the future. I hope that's the case. I'm still a little bit skeptical. I feel like if push came to shove, they'd just say, hey, we fired you at Rogue Planet Games, but there's a spot for you at Dark Paw Games working on EverQuest. More realistically, it might be the development studio they drummed up for H1Z1. So we'll definitely need more time to see how that plays out, but it was certainly a refreshing bit of honesty in the messaging. We did get a glimpse of the team that's working on the Planet Side franchise. You know, before the last round of layoffs, we kind of had in our mind a picture of four or five people that were working on Planet Side 2. The people you saw on live streams are by no means the only people that worked on the title, but definitely at the time, there were other priorities. For example, when they rolled out DX11, I would expect they brought in a lot of reinforcements from the Planet Side Arena team. The problem for Planet Side 2 is we just could never keep reinforcements around to really go after bigger objectives. So now this whole team, while they all probably dabbled in helping Planet Side 2 here or there over the years, their primary objective is Planet Side 2. Is it smaller than the team that worked on Planet Side Arena? Sure. But it's the largest dedicated force Planet Side 2 has had in a long time. Hopefully the whole structure around the team in Daybreak Games has been pruned appropriately to support the size of game Planet Side 2 is and we can avoid monetization having to be the primary directive of this development team just to meet their requirements, just to keep the doors open on the studio. The team has absolutely been much more active on social media. Just in general, there's a lot more to talk about. I'm a little bit worried they're spitting the hype train up a little bit too fast, but maybe at this point, it's like, what's there to lose? You gotta hype the heck out of it and try to get people into it and ready to go for the next big patch, or it's the end of the line anyways. No reason to not go all in on hype mode if that's the case. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but one thing I did think was interesting was this one from Rel, that he's getting a lot of NPC spawn locations placed. The first thing that springs to mind is some sort of new player experience thing, but that could be such a wide range of things, anything from objects for an event, NBC vendors in a sanctuary, or more dummies for another version of a training zone. So guys, I'll be getting back to you soon on how this patch went. Hopefully it clears up some of the performance issues we've been seeing. We've been seeing some refreshing honesty on what happened over the past few years for Planetside, and they are hard at work doing some closed testing with some of the community members. So they are really taking all the right steps to get themselves back to being an indie studio. I'm hoping we can just see a really nice patch execution. That means not rushing it like DX11. That means doing open testing as well so we can track down all the bugs. Not only do we test and find the bugs, we actually spend a reasonable amount of time squashing as many of those bugs as we can. We're not gonna get them all. It is an indie studio after all. That's sort of a lie when you got DBG, the big publishing company up above them. 
But to some level, it's still an indie studio. We gotta be okay with a few bugs. But to me, as long as there's a process, there's an attempt, and the ones that are missed are tracked and solved in a reasonable amount of time, God, I feel like I'm just being such an apologist. Let's let's just say the bar's pretty low, and I just I really hope they get over that. That'll set a good precedent for the future that they can improve upon. Open test to find bugs, spend time fixing bugs, actively track and fix the remaining bugs in a reasonable amount of time. I think that'll go a long way in terms of earning the community's trust back in regards to patching. Anyways, fellow Araxians, that's all I have for right now. Happy patch day. And once the servers are back up, I will see you, Planetside.